Do you really want to live in a world without Coca-Cola? After diving into the ingredients of this national, no, global staple, your answer to this question might surprise you. Each day, Coca-Cola Company sells 1.9 billion bottles. And don't worry, we did the math for you. That means every year Coca-Cola sells... I, I, I'm not even going to say that number. That many bottles. Santa Claus loves it. Polar bears forget about their impending extinction because of it. And it's even the official drink of the Olympics. But should you replenish lost electrolytes with this makeshift rust cleaner? Let's find out after Coca-Cola shows, shows me, me what, what it's made, made of. of. First up on the ingredients list is carbonated water. Simply put, this is the base of all bubbly beverages. Its name is derived from its infusion of carbon dioxide gas to water under pressure. The most you have to worry about is a little bit of gas and bloating depending on how your stomach is, and some studies claim that carbonated water might actually help you feel fuller than regular water. Either way, this doesn't seem like an ingredient that you should be focusing on too much. Next up, we have the pesky repeat offender, high fructose corn syrup. This well-known ingredient is a processed sweetener created from corn that can lead to weight gain, heart disease, and diabetes. In a 2012 study published in the journal Global Health, researchers determined that countries with heavy use of high fructose corn syrup experienced a 20% increase in frequency of diabetes when compared to countries with lower usage of the syrup. And that's even after considering variations in obesity, BMI levels, and total sugar intake. When you consume sugars, you want to find products that contain fiber which can slow down the body's absorption of sugar. If there's not enough fiber to slow down absorption, the body will experience a spike in blood sugar which can lead to insulin resistance, a precursor to conditions like diabetes and PCOS. You got a cell phone from them once. And Coca-Cola has a whopping zero grams of fiber, so it doesn't look like there will be much protection from that sugar spike. But Coca-Cola is extra sneaky on the food label. When you read the nutrition facts, the label states that one can of Coca-Cola contains 78% of the recommended maximum daily sugar intake. That's a lot for one tiny can. There are 39 grams of sugar in each can, but according to the American Heart Association, women should try to cap their total sugar intake at 24 grams per day, while men should aim for less than 36 grams. This means that one can is actually more than anyone should have in a day. But when you look closer, you realize that 100% of those grams come from added sugar. Added sugar is something that you should try to avoid in a healthy diet, because sweeteners add calories but no nutrition. So when it comes to sugar, even a tiny can of Coca-Cola is more than your daily allotment, and kids should have even less. Next time you're asked Coke or Pepsi, try opting for water or a less sugary alternative. After high fructose corn syrup is caramel color. This abundant yet controversial food coloring has a conflicting reputation. Found in many food items such as breads, beers, and candies, it's a hard additive to avoid. But should you avoid it? Well. It depends on who you ask. According to the Center for Science in the Public Interest, caramel color is made by heating a sugar compound, usually high dextrose corn syrup, often together with ammonium compounds, acids, or alkalis. Caramel color, when produced with ammonia, contains contaminants like 2-methylimidazole and 4-methylimidazole. In 2007, Studies by the U.S. National Toxicology Program found that these two contaminants cause cancer in male and female mice, and possibly in female rats. In 2011, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, a division of the World Health Organization, concluded that 2 and 4 methylimidazole are possibly carcinogenic to humans. Then, the state of California's Environmental Protection Agency listed ammonia caramel coloring as a carcinogen under the state's Proposition 65. The state lists chemicals when they pose a lifetime risk of at least one cancer per 100,000 people. Pretty alarming stuff. On the flip side, Coca-Cola addressed these claims in the following response. CSPI's statement irresponsibly insinuates that the caramel used in our beverages is unsafe and maliciously raises cancer concerns among consumers. 
The primary studies linking MEIs to cancer showed varying effects in male and female mice and rats when each were tested at extremely high doses. In fact, further studies indicated that MEIs may offer a reduced risk of cancer. Like most things in a world flooded with information, you have to make a decision on who you trust more, the CSPI and other smaller studies, or Coca-Cola and their favored primary studies. It's important to note that many conglomerates, Coca-Cola being one of them, have a research and development department that makes it easier for them to fund and push certain studies that make their products more marketable. Unsurprisingly, in 2015, Coca-Cola was found to have funded a global network of scientists called the Global Energy Balance Network to divert attention from the contribution of sugar-sweetened beverages to the obesity epidemic, instead blaming inadequate exercise. Studies, like ingredient lists, can't always be taken at face value. On to phosphoric acid. This crystalline liquid prevents mold growth from bacteria while also contributing tanginess and acidity to Coca-Cola. Phosphorus is naturally found in the bones and works with calcium to form strong bones and teeth. Because of this, light research will have you run into some studies and articles claiming that phosphoric acid is actually good. However, too much can have the opposite effect. Excessive intake of phosphoric acid changes calcium to phosphorus ratio, an imbalance of not only the calcium and phosphorus ratio, but also the acid base in the body, resulting in decreased bone density and even osteoporosis and fractures. It can also impair your body's ability to use other minerals such as iron, zinc, and magnesium. You might think this isn't too big of a deal since most people struggle with nutrient and mineral deficiencies. However, overconsumption of phosphorus is common since most people get enough in their diet. These calcium leaching effects are only strengthened in conjunction with the last ingredient on the list. But before we get there, natural flavors. This is one that will come up in a lot of our videos. Many companies have claimed their use of the term is to protect secret formulas and ingredients so consumers can simply recreate their product at home. However, the term itself is very misleading. Natural implies that any flavoring comes straight from the source of a fruit or vegetable. However, companies have a lot of leeway to stretch the meaning and these natural flavorings can be deceivingly artificial. A New York Times article quoted EWG scientist David Andrews as saying, there does not seem to be much of a difference between natural and artificial flavors. Finally, caffeine. The bitter substance that gives coffee its kick is known for having many profound effects on the human body. While some of them are actually positive, such as its mood-enhancing effects, the negatives here vastly outweigh the positives. From insomnia to headaches, dizziness, dehydration, anxiety, and dependency, you might want to reconsider your caffeine consumption. While we may not think of it as one, caffeine is a stimulant drug which can cause withdrawal symptoms like mental fog, depressed mood, fatigue, and headache for days after stopping consumption. No wonder mom's so cranky before coffee. What makes this substance so potentially dangerous beyond its addictive qualities is its effects on the bones that mirror that of phosphoric acid. A 2012 study reports that it has been demonstrated that caffeine negatively influences calcium balance by reducing renal reabsorption of calcium and possibly by reducing intestinal calcium absorption efficiency. Just like with phosphoric acid, there is much conflicting data that suggests caffeine actually contributes to good bone health. But due to the fact that both caffeine and phosphoric acid have been linked to decreased bone density, hip fracture, and osteoporosis, you may at the very least want to cut back on this sugary drink. So back to the original question. Do you really, really want to? Yeah, we got it. We're going to have to go ahead and say yes. From its high sugar content, 65 grams, inclusion of controversial additives, such as caramel color and phosphoric acid, and understatedly shady business practices, consider opting for a different beverage to quench your thirst. There are actually some Coke alternatives popping up as of late, such as Olipop, that use much better ingredients minus the inclusion of caffeine. I'm not a cola person myself, but I've tried this one and it's pretty good. Well, that's all for this one. 
I'm gonna go crack open a can of crisp coke and clean up an old oil spill. See you next time on Show Me What You Made Of.